welcome back to the Waddle Park Game Day Vlogs. This is a huge top four defining clash in the lowest league of the VAFA thirds competition. If you've been loving the Div 12 Resi's Waddle Park series and you don't want to miss an episode, subscribe down below. We're about to play some crucial games to conclude this season. Huge clash this week down at the zoo though. We're taking on Mazenod, who are on top of the ladder they beat every team by 130 points. Um, so we set ourselves for a massive clash at the zoo in the mud to try and see how far we are away from the best team in the competition. Feeling fresh. I we were ready to go. Morning, Dan. Morning, Morning boys. Best day of the year. Last two weeks ago, we were late because we had to pick up Roger from the airport. Last week, we had to pick up Sedgy from the airport. And this week, I had to come from the airport because I was at Rocket Rooftop all night. I haven't slept. Against Alston Wick, we played in rain, but there was no wind. Last week, we played in mud, but there was no rain. This week, it is wind, rain, and mud all in one. We haven't trained all week, which is probably what you expect of a third side. <laughs> um, but we haven't trained all week because the ground's not in great condition. Uh, and I guess they were waiting, like not letting us train so that we could play on it. But um, it doesn't look that bad. It's going to be worse than last week though. Uh, but I guess because we haven't trained, it looks okay at the moment. But um, yeah, versing the top side, they beat everyone by 120 points. They're on like 500%. I think they dropped one game and it was earlier in the year in grading and maybe they played someone higher. But they're, they're a league above, to be honest. Maz and I are a league above. No, I'm stoked to be back. This is, this is the best conditions. Yeah, Will's missed a couple of weeks. Rushing back for the top of the table clash. <laughs> um, it's probably the worst conditions we've played in all year. Real hamstring awareness today. Like, <laughs> this is... I was I was scared straight during the week by Joycey. He said, the worst games to come back is when you've done your hamstring previously and you've come back from a cold. Extremely motivated. Flashback to the motivation. I actually feel good. Everyone's in here talking about, oh, if we get within 10 goals. Oh, fuck that. I'm winning. I, I want to win. I mean, I think we got the team to win today. You know, we got a few, a few players back. Trey's playing a bit higher up the ground. A few more possessions for him, I think. I think we've got a serious shot to win this. Cold, rainy, top of the table. We have four lights out, so I think it's probably going to be a cosy eight goal win to the Wattle Park Animals. Can't bloody wait. They are top of the table. They are undefeated, but it's pissing down rain. It's a mud heap. It brings everyone down to the same level. So it's about who wants it more. Who wants to put their head over the agate? Who wants to put their head in the hole when the bombs and the nukes are coming from every which angle? And the answer is, you're looking at it. Yes, boy. <laughs> Anybody else see Hulk Hogan representing Trump? It's the best thing ever. He ripped his shirt off at a... Put, put it in here, Dossie. Hulk Hogan ripping his shirt off at a Donald Trump rally. Here, right here. The funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. And it So we're playing today and then the loose game plan after the game is a bus straight to Geelong because Chekis is playing all night long up until 3am at DJ set there. So I'm a bit concerned a few of the boys don't have their head in the game and they're thinking about how they're going to make it to the bus home at 3am. See if it has an effect. I think there was a lot of debate this morning about how we're getting to Geelong. I know Australia's been up to 6am trying to order a minibus. Can't do that unfortunately. We've got maxi taxis, we've got Ubers. We're talking about taking two cars, but then it's who drives. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of issues. But at half time we come in here and we work out how we're actually going to get to Geelong tonight. I don't want to take the V line, but if we're going to have to stick it out to 6am, we're going to have to stick it out to 6am. I'll do it. St. James, here we come. Uh, Charles, ask Kate McDonald why he's famous at Lambies. There's a reason. He's very famous inside those walls. So much so they have his picture hanging on the wall. <laughs> I like our freestyle and our backstroke. Well, even the butterfly to the ones, boys. But our backstroke, uh, what's it called? Freestyle and backstroke are really, we've been really working on out here on uh, Tuesday and Thursday. So we'll see how we'll go. I wouldn't mind some gold. Yeah, I was there and I saw Will wasn't there. So 
Yeah, um, so, I so didn't know. that's the only reason. Mm, I didn't know we were training on Thursday, but on Thursday I also bought a PS5, so trust me not to come to training. Yeah, I thought we were playing a bit of 2K. Yeah, 2K and a bit of, bit of FIFA and pulling up from. Bailey sucks at 2K, so just get that on record. Bailey sucks at 2K. Coming soon, Cooks and V Tails, 2K. Career mode, we'll play the whole career mode in one session. We're gonna play the whole 82 games. Yeah, series. whole 82. Morning. Always be glad not to be playing today. Top of the table, these conditions. So much happier, like disgusting weather, freezing, just wet, disgusting. I'm, just, I'm so glad I played last week, not this week. So much better. The captain of Australia FC lining up. Oh, that's the building. Oi, center it, center it. It was like you were about to play a prank, I don't know. Uh, well, what's he happening came here? out to warm up and he went straight back in. Alright, that's we boost the club rooms. I only want to do my downward dogs on the cement. Um, please help open up my core, help with my back. I had back injuries when I was 18. I had a slip disc that caused my leg to be borderline numb for like eight months. And I haven't had that since I was 18, but stuff with the core and the hammies. Um, really worry me, so I like to... <laughs> now this isn't, this isn't a gag, this is a genuine movement, this is, let's be professional here. I'm, I'm not even kidding, it's an actual movement. It's called... I assume it's hip thrust or something. Um, glute, glute, bridges. Uh, put this on the OnlyFans, Daniel. <laughs> All right, um, another, you know, people call me David Doss. Um, I don't wear my footy socks or my footy boots in the warm-up because I don't like getting my feet sodden like an hour and a half before we play. Um, so I swap them over when we come back in. And I also bring two jumpers down when it's wet and I swap one jumper at half time. <laughs> and um, the last few weeks, a couple of blokes have been like, oh, we're short on jumpers, can we borrow one of yours? And I go, I need two. I need two to keep warm. To Danny Allen and just everyone involved just for backing me in. Um, you know, it's good to know that I've got some friends and family that reach out in hard times, but you know, it's all mental and everything else outside of this doesn't matter like that. Look, I'm proud of you this week, mate. The game hasn't even started and you're here. I know, right? Crazy. Look at this, by the way. Shit. What is that? What is that? It's where I belong, though. Yes, Badge. Lady, are we confident? Um, yeah. Yeah? How confident? Uh, we're zero percent confident. Oh. Not oh, confident at all then, Lady. Okay, fine. Um, I reckon 75% confident. If you could compare the two teams out there, the two AFL teams, what would you say? Um, well, if Mazmont's first and we lost them by nearly 100 points, then yeah, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> it wouldn't be a good comparison. And a good, um... Whatever the word is, I forgot the word already. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Probably gonna we're gonna have to keep it up forward with Caden, so try and get Caden, Caden, Keegan, Jacqueline Dross, very tall, tall, strong options. Uh, in the middle of the oval. Alright, let's not kick to the pockets. Put it in the middle, three tall targets. If you put it up, I know it's wet, put it up in that in that hot spot. If you, we, we can't really go wrong, can we? We've got three tall targets and some crummers. Don't put in the wings. They're not they're not the locals, they should be running out to the pockets to take crowns. Badly. Yeah. We need to play like my footy team last week. Can anyone read the scores? 118 to one. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. that was my game last week, and we need to play like Straight Road FC. All right. Now, no house. He's just right there. Um. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's in that ugly Hawthorne jersey. Oh. Um. Our yellow jersey is even more. Uh, is almost as ugly as that one. Yeah. No has four goals is enough to get dropped. So Doss, you need to kick more than five. <laughs> <laughs> you will get dropped if you don't kick more than 
so far, Let's go, boys! Right. We lost this same 100 points. Let's reverse it and win The first quarter kicked off. And it was business as usual for the Mazenod Nods. I don't know their nickname, but um, yeah, they they were on from the start. Uh, we played them earlier in the year and we got within 90 points, which was a pretty good feat if you look around the competition. But this week it was, yeah, tough sledding for the boys. They were getting it out of the midfield. They were setting up so well from their half backs. Um, they were setting up so well from their half forwards. And it was just, you know, early days when you we were in for a bit of a long day at the office. <laughs> I tried to push up the ground and play as like a spare in defence, so I got a couple of kicks at half back to try and move the footy forward of the ball, but they almost allowed us to have <coughs> extras in our defensive half because they knew that we would turn it over in our offensive half, and that's where all their play started. So um, we were getting, you know, we were playing checkers and they were playing chess, and it was muddy and it was cold, and it was, yeah, early in that first quarter, even though I thought we tried to fight it out pretty well. Um, we knew we were in for a long, long day at the office. Down back, they're very smart. They set up as contingent, they run up the field, they try to suck you in to come up, and they're quicker than us on the way back in. And they're smarter than mm -hmm. us. So it's contingent here. Going forward, boys, we obviously haven't kicked any goals. A lot of the time we're getting the ball across half back. We're looking up, and I'm not saying people that actually want the ball, like leading with, not people that are leading with purpose. There's a difference between sticking your hand up in between five Mazenod players and actually wanting the fucking ball. And even if you're not going to get it, you lead hard. You suck one of their Mazenod players yeah, out of the zone, place. create space behind so someone else can lead hard. It, uh, you got to ask yourself, do you actually want the fucking ball? Because you need to lead like you want it. On the back foot a little bit, they kicked the first seven. They had the wind. No problem. Um, big test here. I reckon we'll kick a, a, a couple here, get ourselves back in. I don't think it's over. Jara who wants to play backline for the rest of the season, uh, was good defensively, took a couple of intercept marks, laid some tackles, got a lot of ball off the half back line. It was a dog day for everyone at the office, but uh, there was things that Jared did off the back line that was very encouraging for me. I um, He's been thrown around this season, so for him to get a little bit of form in the back 50, especially on a day like that, like you'll never get that much supply in a game again. Um, as a defender, the poor bastards, uh, I, I was really encouraged by. I got my hands on it at half forward line and there was a part of me that thought I'm going to attempt to kick this 55 metres through the big sticks but I lowered my eyes and I hit Jackie Lindros up who was providing a great target for us in that first half. He went back and slotted it. He's got the build of a natural key forward, so I think we found one there. But it was good to, you know, after a quiet half, get my hands on the footy. Good to contribute in some way of getting us on the scoreboard. Got really physical in that second quarter. Both teams trying to crack in as best they can. Uh, I picked the ball up at the top of the goal square and I tried to I tried to stay composed and either find a handball or more realistically snap it over my head through the big sticks. And their big full back laid a big tackle and he just creamed his knee into my thigh and it is one of the biggest corkies I've ever experienced. Like it felt like he just kneed my femur uh, and I went down and I was so sore. Initially, I was like, oh, I'm going to be rendered useless. I won't be able to walk here. Like, I'm in strife. I got to the bench, and there was a decision to be made. Do we ice you now, and you're off for the rest of the game? Or do you just try and stay warm and fight through it? I saw that we'd already lost Shrey and a couple of others on the pine. So I made the decision to bravely uh, fight through my minor corky. While I was off assessing the corky, cooks it who can play anywhere. He was playing in defense for us today. Got a handball receive in the forward line and slotted a nice little goal. He's good for a goal a game, Cookson. Even when he is playing in defense, he's good for a goal a game. So it was awesome to see the young king get on the scoreboard. Yeah, 
tough quarter, tough quarter for the boys um, in terms of contest and fight, but good quarter in terms of fight back. Kick three or four, probably could have kicked more, missed a couple of chances. Yeah, I, I copped a big corky by their big fullback. It is so sore, but I'm going to be a Petrarca and run back on and hopefully there's no internal bleeding. He's <laughs> the magnesium into me. The kid gave me, kid gave me a chocolate milk and obviously I obliged and said yes. Went on and had a stitch so I'm just getting the magnesium back into me, getting a bit of normal fluids and then yeah, we should be right. Uh, how are we getting to Geelong again? We've got to work that out man. we really got to work out how we're getting to Geelong because I, yeah, is it minibus? Someone book it over. Uh, Why are we not playing that game? We're still just fucking with a handball a bit. We're still fucking around with the wings a bit. Alright? So, not, not the win this quarter, so we go back to a different game plan. We're not just going to bomb it in like that. We're going to play a bit more smarter and kick a few options. But when we have that win, not a small ground, that's what we should be doing. Pretty obvious that, you know, we're not going to win the game in football, but take your pride in the little wins. If you're in the back line, think about keeping your man goalless this next half. Yep. And if you keep him goalless this next half, that is a win in your back pocket, alright? Everyone, set yourself an objective. All right. Foods are looking good, bruv. See how we feel tomorrow, I guess. Off to Geelong. Off to Geelong. There's the beverages to be drank. Third quarter. More of the same. Tough sledding. Tough sledding for the animals. But we, we were trying to stay as competitive as we could throughout the game. And I thought it was a big tick that we hung in there as long as we could. I wasn't impacting the scoreboard at all until the second half. Checkers picked it up out of the ruck, kicked it long, and I was able to hold my ground, protect the drop of the ball, and take a contested mark. So I went back to take the kick, and they started arguing with the ref about a decision, and the ref just gave me the 50 metres. So I went up, and while they were still arguing with the, with the umpire, I just dribbled it right next to him. So it was good to get on the scoreboard, but the reason I positioned myself there is because last week, Checkers grabbed it out of the ruck, threw it on the boot, and it floated to the pocket, and Andy Munro marked it in the pocket. And I sort of thought to myself, if there's another stoppage 45, 40 out, just stay deep, because that quick kick, you can get involved. So when there was a stoppage 40, 45 out, I learnt off Andy Munro. I literally went and positioned myself in a similar position off the back of watching Andy Munro take his mark. Um, and then it happened again. Checkers, quick kick out of the ruck, floated towards me and I took the mark. So I'll give a shout out to Checkers for doing all the hard work, but I'll also give a shout out for Andy Munro for teaching me some forward craft positioning. A little sketch who is one of my favourite players on the Water Park Animals got thrown in defence. He's sort of a mid slash forward, so we were throwing the magnets around a little bit to stem the bleeding. But he's almost taken mark at the Millennium. That would have been better than Daisy's, I reckon, if Sketch had taken that screamer. So uh, gutted that he couldn't bring it down. I think he got surprised by how high he got. But that would have been probably the Wattle Park Animals mark of the year. Was, since quarter time we've been alright. I think they had an eight goal or nine goal lead in the first term and since then it's been fairly even. Um, we're cracking in. I think we're showing a good account of ourselves. Um, yeah, it's getting a bit restless out there. But um, I, I'm impressed by the effort from the boys and hopefully we can run out of so, you know, Let's put a few goals on. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're kicking with the win. We, we, we can get the goals on the board. Right? The end of that third quarter, I thought we were going to kick a couple... Um, consolation goals and make the scoreboard a little bit more respectable but the weight of their supply inside 50 broke our poor back line and they end up nearly doubling the margin <laughs> between three quarter time and the last quarter which is like so disappointing
Jenkins battles on all day again. It was good that towards the end of the game, after getting cannoned into for, th- for four quarters in the mud, in the wet at Wattle Park, Saturday morning, getting cannoned into, uh, he gets a goal out of the stoppage. So it was good that Checkers got a lick of the ice cream, um, grabs it out the ruck, snaps it at goal, floated through. He's got that in his arsenal, which is good. It's almost the Tom Hawkins move, but uh, yeah, a little bit of just desserts for the Czech man who battled hard throughout the game. Now, I'd had a quiet one. Maybe it was because half my left side of my body went numb <laughs> in the second half, um, but I only managed two. And the last goal that I kicked at the end of the game, it was literally 30 seconds left, was sort of a, a pretty classic type goal where I pick up, snap over my head, running towards the boundary and it floats through. It takes me two tap alongs the grounds to pick it up. Like It takes me a couple of bobbles. And I reckon when we're training and I've got a footy in my hand two or three times a week, you know, it still might take me a couple of bobbles to pick it up, but it's definitely less prominent than what it's been recently. So even though I do kick the goal, um, it's something that I want to work on is just being a little bit cleaner. Um, And if I can tidy that up over the next couple of weeks, I think, yeah, hopefully we can um, get a little bit of form, pinch one more win and um, then have a crack in finals. Too slow to adjust. Just bad football. Like like we said the right things at quarter time, half time, three quarter time. Just don't do it. So you, you get that when you play a really smart, well drilled team, you have to play really disciplined footy. And uh, when you don't, they kick forty goals and you lose by 130, so that's funny, isn't it? Welcome back, mate. That's cool. Oh, good, mate. Um, really, like... I'll tell you what sums up my day. Got the footy, clean pick-up. I see Rog over the top of a defender. I'm like, Rog, I'll get it over the top to you. What's happened? No, I just didn't get enough on it. Hand pass straight to the defender and they kick a goal out of it. So, yeah, I really deserve this warm shower. <laughs> like, obviously, they're an outlier in the competition. If we can brush off this week, bounce back, we got second on the ladder next week. That'll be a really good indication of where we sit. Keep building towards the end of the season. We need one more win to make finals. But, uh, yeah, shattering result in the end there. It, it got really flat that second half. Um, we worked out the V lines at 4:45, and we're going to catch out there, and then we're going to work out how to get home after that. There's no Ubers, no taxis, no minibus. Come off and wet, and we have to catch a bloody V line. The plot thickens now for the rest of the season because off the back of that loss, we have fallen down to fourth place. We are only one game above fifth and that is St. Mary's who are coming home with a wet sail to finish off this season. We must win one game to finish the year and we preferably need St. Mary's to lose one or if they win two, hopefully not catch us in percentage. So we are no lock to play finals. It is going to come down to the last couple of results. And um, yeah, super excited to bring you guys along with us as we push for finals to finish off the season. Once again, guys, I appreciate all of the support. I appreciate everyone tuning in. And I'll see you for some more content uh, very, very soon. Cheers, guys.